Happy Trust Your Intuition Day. It's Colette Baron reed and B. Zoo. And we're here to do the Astro Oracle reading. I'm very excited. Here we go. Oh, and we have a fantastic quiz. How intuitive are you at reading Oracle cards? Ooh, you have to take it. It's so good. Okay, let's get going now. Now, you will get a really intimate personal reading this week if you follow with your sun sign first, then the three cards that represent your ascendant or your rising sign, and then you're going to do your moon. And I've, if you've noticed, I have a friend who decided to come along to help with the reading. This is little Bizu. She was very unhappy that I left her to come here, so I went and got her after the screaming ended. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get going. So let's get going with Aries. We are using the Enchanted Map Oracle. We all need a map nowadays, don't we? We certainly feel that uncharted seas. So Mountain is in the protection position, uh, wide open, and then Heal the Ouch also in protection. So, so Mountain is in the protection position, then wide open, and then Heal the Ouch in protection. So you have two protection cards for Aries this week, which means you gotta really slow down. Your opportunities and your possibilities are unlimited, but only if you surrender the nature of your obstacle. In other words, like you just got to let go, um, not hammer away at it. If there's an obstacle, it's really an opportunity for you just to slow down. And perhaps the timing of things aren't that right or 100%. You might need to fix some things or look at some things, which is exactly what heal the ouch in the protection position means. This also reminds you not to... Um, not to take on the burden that is not your own. In other words, sometimes you can hurt somebody else by trying to fix something and that prevents them from learning something. So you've got to really understand this week, Aries, what is yours and what is not yours to do, okay? So it's a week to slow down for Aries. And then you have all the opportunities in the world that'll come out of that slower downy. That's not even correct language, but <laughs> okay. Taurus is next. What does Taurus say? Taurus is intention, coming to life, and wishing well, and here we go. Okay, so the intention is in the protection position for Taurus, right? And then you have coming to life and wishing well. So as long as you are really clear about your motives this week, Taurus, right? That's going to be really important. Again, for you also, slow down, take a beat, and say, why do I want this? Why and what? What am I calling into being, you know, from my actions and my past intentions? Like basically, what am I making out of my life? What am I wishing for and why? So whenever this card is upside down, I always go, it's time to ask why you want what you say you want. Is it so that you can contribute more? Is it, or is it because you want power over others? Or do you want to see a certain outcome, but you're not willing to do the work, so you're trying to look for shortcuts? Bottom line is this is a week also. Great time for inventorying for Taurus. Just really be very clear about what you want this week because basically you've already planted the seeds and you want to make sure that you're not growing weeds because they're pretty. You know what I mean? You really got to make sure that what you're, what you want and is going to serve all and not just you. Okay. Cause it may backfire on you. Now let's see. Okay. Yes. I know you want to kiss mommy. <laughs> Say hello. Can you see her face Mark? Uh, barely because you were wearing black. <laughs> oh, I could have worn it out. I should have worn a, a contrasting color to my little baby. She blends into my top, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Gemini. Let's look at Gemini. Gemini is into the unknown, flying and balancing act. So this is a really great reading for Gemini because these two cards together actually have a beautiful story that they tell. Because into the unknown means to see that she has blindfold on. She doesn't know what's going to happen when she jumps over the side of the railing, right? Um, and this is an invitation to step into an experience that you really don't know. You don't really know what to do. You have no nothing to really rely on in the map of your previous life, if you will, right? And this is this says in order for you to progress in a way that feels right. Um, you need to get detached. So flying is looking at the bigger picture and not so much getting tied up in the minutia. And then for Gemini, again, the last card balancing act. So this is about not throwing all your eggs in every single basket, like, or one basket, sorry, and spreading your energy out a little bit more. So in other words, you know, 
Like don't run yourself ragged over one thing this week. It's important for you to be more balanced and be a little bit more resilient, if you will. So um, sometimes what, ha what happens when this card comes up, it indicates that you may have been running out of steam. So always pay attention to how you get your energy back. Um, there's no rush for you to run into this scenario here. It's really about you learning and spending enough time to learn and balancing it with your learning. Like this and that will be true. So how do you apply that to yourself? How do you integrate the experience, et cetera, this week? So again, a slower week for Gemini also. Uh, but it's actually really, it, it's, it's quite productive as well. As long as you remember, you don't have a map. For the, if it's unknown and you will find the map if you stay above it and don't get caught up in the, all the tiny details. Right, Bizu? Yes. She's a little Leo. Okay, now let's take a look at Cancers. Cancer, magical map shifter. That means that people will come to your aid this week uh, and help you. Oh, that's interesting. So, so the magical map shifter, the rescue card is in protection and sad embrace. So this is, this can mean one of two things for cancer. So the first card is the anchor. So we know that somebody other than you is going to bring you really good advice. Now they could also act as a person who presents themselves to you as somebody that you may have had some type of loss around. So they might remind you, say, of your mom who passed away or your dad or just something that you thought was done that has come, that they've come back to help you with, all right? So the rescue card is in the protection and that means that you need to participate in your own rescue this week, but you also can ask for help. So both and, again, for cancers. So this is a poignant week for cancers, an emotional week for cancers because the sad embrace card also brings in the kind of healing from grief Grief, right? And this person helps you with that. So you might actually see a scenario turned around that in the past you might've been triggered by or something that would have been unresolved for you. And this week is a resolution because of someone else. So this is going to be interesting I'm, to hear from the cancer, cancer crowd here, myself included. Now, Bizu, oh, you're sleeping. Now she's like a little mop on my lap. Um, these are your cards, Bizu, for Leos. <laughs> this is again Leo's sun, Leo rising or Leo moon. There we go. And I so love your comments, especially from the astrology nerds who love how accurate this is. And you can see how both astrology and divination work together, one being more of a fixed system, which is the map of the stars, and the other one being fluid that work alongside of the map, which really tracks energy, which is the divinatory principle of oracle cards. So there you go. Leos. Leos, Leos, Leos. Yeah, that's so interesting. So Leo's first card is wide open and it's in the protection position, the upside down position. So what it's asking you to do is to look at your limitations um, and allow yourself not to, to know the difference between what is limited and what is scarcity. Big difference, right? I, I believe we live in an unlimited universe and that there are unlimited possibilities and potentials for every person, but you might not be interested in all of those potentials. Like I am never going to be a brain surgeon. You know, that's just not going to be for me. My limitations are actually beautifully designed because I have skills and talents and interests in these things over here, right? So you, it's really learning that what is not for you is a really great way to start the week for Leo's. And then you'll get into the flow. So recognize you might have to say no to some things, like not all things are for you. That's really important. Uh, you get very much into the flow when you get that. And then also you, because you haven't spread yourself too thin, Leo's, um, then you have the coming to life card, which is all about whatever projects that now say you've had to say no to 10 things, but two things were the ones that you really wanted to do anyway. All of a sudden those start to come to life. When you pare away and simplify this week, Leo's amazing things start to occur for you and they come to life in front of your eyes. All right. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I love doing this. Okay. Virgos. Let's see for Virgo. This Virgo sun, Virgo moon, and let's do it this way. Okay. 
All right, so now we've got compass in the protection position, dragon's lair in the protection position and protecting treasure. So Virgos, you need to kind of recalibrate your idea of where your North Star is for you. What is most important to you? Because you might have gone a little bit off track. So it's asking you to get back on track and also to remember that your primary relationship is with spirit, not with human beings. So it's first and foremost, get with God or get with source or the universe, whatever language that you like to use is really important important that your spirituality comes first and that will help everything get back into order for you. The dragon's lair beside this means you could be stepping into and then protecting treasure. This is like, ooh, there could be a dicey situation for you this week that you actually have to protect yourself against. And this is typically with other people, um, you know, who are around you and you need healthier boundaries with, that could be like that. Or, you know, you could also have been stepping into a situation that because you really weren't, your higher power wasn't your higher power, you could have had a project with your higher power and you wanted it so bad. Oh my gosh, I want this, I want this, I want this. And that becomes your God basically. And then all of a sudden you've stepped into muck and you're like, oh crap, this is not what I thought it would be. That kind of thing could happen for you as well this week. So why not avoid it? Because that's what these readings are for. They're energy reports. They're like, they're like weather reports. And this day I'm saying, this is the time to wear the, what the, uh, wear your umbrella, bring your umbrella here. So you don't need to experience this, but to be aware that you need healthy, nice, healthy boundaries. And to remember that your primary relationship in the manifest world is actually spirit first, everything else second. Okay, now let's look at Libra. And that would be Libra Sun, right? Yes, you are super cute. Yes, you are. Libra Sun, Libra Rising, our Ascendant, or Libra Moon. And if you don't know all of these things, I forgot to mention at the beginning, just go to astro.com and you can put in your birth data and you are going to be so happy because you'll learn about your chart and then these cards will make more sense to you. So for Libra, here we go. Oh, Libra starts with protecting treasure on the upside, right up. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. And you saw me shuffle them. <laughs> and then wide open here. So um, this is not a week for Libra. Um, this is not a week for you to be rushing out into the wide open spaces. This is a really good week for you to hunker down and recalibrate, do some inventory. The first card is protecting treasure. So it, it reminds you who protects me. Like, wait a sec. So yes, I have to behave. If I want self-esteem, I have to do self I have to do esteemable acts. Um, if I want to feel more protected, I have to behave as if I trust that my boundaries are intact or that I have to create boundaries or make decisions that would be self-supporting right? Like self-supporting. So in other words, you don't, if you know, you don't really trust the people at the party, you don't go, right? So I don't know if there are parties going down right now, but not where I live, but you know what I'm getting at, right? So just really trust yourself about who you want to communicate with this week. Um, and also about what, again, the compass is in the protection position, like it was with one of the earlier signs. And this is again, asking you to remember what is your primary relationship is with spirit. That's your, your true North is spirit. That's your higher power, not the job, not the boyfriend, not the girlfriend, not the, you know, not the thing that is not your higher power. Your higher power is the ineffable, omniscient, um, energy that connects all things. And then you can see what is available to you. But this is a good week, just looking at these cards to hunker down and stay with what you know, recognize your limitations, but also to recognize how, when you place your attention fully on something and consider it being your higher power. Like, you know how people chase money or fame or, you know, they want more followers on the internet. That's the thing they get up for. What happens is, is that ends up limiting all your, like takes away all your other possibilities because you're so fixated on the one thing you miss some of the miracles. So just remember that stay open. The best way to stay open is to remember your higher power is primary. And that is for Libra. Now I'm going to shuffle. Oh, I have a sleeping puppy. Wait, wait till she starts snoring now. This is going to be fun. <laughs> she really snores a lot. She sleeps up by my head at night. Okay, here we go, Scorpio. Let's see, Scorpio. 
So the magical map shifter begins with Scorpio also, only this time uh, she is in the protection position. And that means that you learn from somebody who may come in as a challenger to you, right? So in other words, what are you learning from this person who may be challenging you? Now, it's, a, it's necessary for your growth, but that could also be somebody inside of you as well. So the magical map shifter is the person who transforms you. So it could be that part of you that you're working with as well. Um, and you're diving into, because it's metamorphosis next, that's why I said that, because it's really about the process of change and transformation, which means you're working on you. Uh, it's also fantastic about transforming the way you artistically and creatively um, uh, express yourself because spark is also there. So as you move through your own material, your own personal material, as you go through your transformation, because everybody's in a great transformation right now, you get more creative as a result of it. So, um, so this is a week again. I, I find this whole week so far is quite contemplative for everybody. We're really contemplating ourselves and what things mean to us and our relationship to our higher power and how we transform into being um, better people, I guess. So um, that's that. Now let's look at Sagittarius. And again, this is how do you work with the energy that's, uh, that's showing up for you this week. Sagittarius. Goblins for Sag. Are they your goblins or other? Oh, you're cleaning house. This is very good, Sagittarius. Oh, no, don't worry, Mark. I'll move him closer. I know he was just about to run over here and go, oh, my God, the cards are all over the place. This is great. So, Sagittarius, you are doing a nice house cleaning. And this is a perfect week for you to take a fearless moral inventory. Um, take a look at the things in you that you know got triggered this week or last week, for example, and you know you're ready to release them. So this is all about a house cleaning, the internal house cleaning, because it's the goblins. But what's great about it is that you become so much more aware of your own power in the world that when you act out of your shadow self, which you have denied or dis disowned, because nobody wants to, you know, wants to own those parts. We got to love those parts of ourselves. So that's what this is about. It's also about cleaning your own self-resentment, for example. You could be resenting yourself or not forgiving yourself for not being perfect. You know, like get a hall pass this week, Sagittarius. Um, and the, the awareness that will come out of this inventory is going to be invaluable for you. Right? Hi. <laughs> I'm in love with this dog. Hi, baby. Are you mama's girl? <laughs> we don't even need to take a puppy break. I'm sure you guys are not even paying attention to the reading because you're staring at my dog. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Now let's take a look at Capricorn. Oh, great. Capricorn has encouragement as the first card encouragement to forgive somebody else. So this is very good. So what, what's very interesting about this reading is if you have been harboring resentments against somebody else um, and not allowing the forgiveness or even to be able to make the man amends because you may have projected onto that person. It could be a go either way. This, this week is encouraging you to reach out and make that, like really turn that intention into something beautiful. And when the wishing well is in the protection position, it also says that you make amends for you. You can't decide how the other person's going to receive that amends, right? But it's really important that you clean house this week. And the universe is really encouraging you to do that. You're going to feel so good. Um, you know, once you discover who that would be, it's a who, or it could be an it, could be an institution. You could be mad at your tax, <laughs> the tax man. I don't know, <laughs> but whatever it is, this is a great week for the Capricorn to do a personal inventory around resentments because it's about heal the ouch and protection and, and really building a bridge, making an amends to somebody else. And it doesn't matter releasing your expectations on the other person's behavior or receptivity to you. Okay, that's interesting for Capricorn or if you have a Capricorn rising or a Capricorn moon. Now Aquarius, are you having fun, Mark, behind the camera? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm learning a lot who to stay away from and who to get close to. <laughs> ah, this is nice for Aquarius. So it's come together is in the protection position this week. And, um, and that means it's time to assess who you associate with. That's very interesting. You said that Mark, right? <laughs> Only you don't have any Aquarius in your chart. So yeah. So, but come together is about that. It's in the protection position and it's like, Hey, 
you know, who am I around? Who are they really my friends? Is am I, you know, who's really close to me? Who do I respect? Am I outgrowing these people? Am I, you know, how can I have better relationships, right? And you assess your commitment as well this week. So am I really committed to being uh, to surrounding myself with these people. And if you're complaining, how much of commitment issues are your own? Like, have you become too isolated and not available to the people? Maybe that's the issue, but whatever it is, you're supposed to assess your relationships this week and trust your intuition as well too. So, um, so moonlight is about really illuminating that soft light. The, the light of the moon is soft. It's reflective. It's receptive using that receptivity that you have to say, to ask yourself in a gentle way, what's my part in this? And can I shift this through the uh, agenda of commitment? So in other words, like, do I make a commitment? Do I break a commitment? And how committed am I really uh, to this? And what have I put into this? That's for Aquarius. What an interesting week. It looks like everybody's doing an inventory this week. And of course, all of us have three of the signs out of the 12. A quarter of the reading impacts every single one of us. Okay. I have to, we have to watch it back. I'm going to see you, Mark, which are Virgo and Sagittarius. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Pisces. Oh, we began this with, uh, I think we began this with Aries too. Okay. So Pisces, um, slow down when you see an obstacle. It's very similar uh, to as we began with the uh, Aries um, reading. So this is when the mountain card is in protection. It, it really means for you to assess it. Are you making a mountain out of a molehill? Um, is it really an obstacle? Like what is the nature of the obstacle? And this is not the time to push past the obstacle because it does appear that with some shift in your perception and perspective, you'll be able to achieve what you need. And one ring circus means you can go it alone. You can, you have the ability to go it alone, but you know, and I also, when I see these two cards together, I also look at this, like take your own counsel. Like sometimes a lot of people give you advice about the obstacle. That's not, not even relevant. So trust your own judgment. You have good judgment and know that with a shift in perspective, like stepping back a little bit, not taking the world so personally, I think you're going to be in good shape. Okay. Wasn't that fun? Isn't that nice, Bizu? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Again, happy intuition day. And don't forget, what are we not forgetting? We are not free. Oh, she's so tired. She's going to fall asleep right now. Intuition quiz, a great one. It's fabulous. You can take it every day if you want. And it is going to tell you exactly how close you are is how intuitive are you at reading Oracle cards? You don't need to know anything about Oracle cards to do amazing at this. Okay. So go take the quiz and I'll see you next time. Okay. YouTubers. Oh boy. Can I bribe you with a puppy to <laughs> subscribe to my channel? Subscribe to my channel and click on the button and the bell will come. And if you click on that, you will get a notification every time I put up a new video. I'll see you next time. Me and Bizu, right? Right Bizu? Okay. Good night. Mm -hmm.